<laughs> that astronaut likes to talk. <laughs> well, he flew in the 60s, so he's kind of an old guy, so yeah. he's in the storytelling time of life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm jealous because he's got all this great old Houston memorabilia collection. Oh, nice. Like, oh, man, he's got like original lights from the Astrodome. Like, man, I'm jealous. Interesting. Great. So, um, you go ahead and clip this. I'll probably do this to your back. I'll just get this on there. And then you just run this up your shirt and out your collar. Um, it's asking why you didn't get a special education. I guess they need my secondary and yeah, like why didn't you get a degree? Okay. Or something. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I didn't get I didn't get a degree for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, for one, it's uh, expensive and difficult and time consuming. And for two, you know, my daughter was born when I was eighteen, so I just went to work. And then. Um, Tell me the story of how you got carried away with genetics. So, um, it started, it was probably 2015, something like that. I was watching a TED talk, and uh, they were talking about de novo synthesis, which is like um, making DNA from scratch, just from like base chemicals. Um, and then basically they can create um, any genetic sequence you can put down on a you know, on a computer file, and make it an actual physical piece of DNA and send it to you in the mail, in like a little tube. And then you can put that in an organism, and whatever you put in the computer is now in that organism. So uh, when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is, this is what I need to do for the dogs. This is the tool we've been waiting for. And so that's kind of where it took my dog breeding, which I had been doing for like five or six years at the time, and kind of pushed me to that next level. So, uh, you work with animals, but what about people? After all, there will surely be those who want to make a glowing person, for example, <laughs> or want to glow in the dark, yeah. or grow your own tail. Um, this is where we enter the territory of ethics. Yeah. So, um, what's your stand on ethics in this uh, field? Um, so, I'm a pretty, I'm, I'm big on personal liberty, right? That's, that's sort of a big thing for me. I think if somebody, wants to give themselves a tail with genetics and they're a grown person get after it you, you do you man um you know i i have done some experiments on myself you know i'm not against it uh, i think people should be smart about it and should be careful but i think the same thing about riding a motorcycle you know um i think if you're going to do something like that you know the ethics can be complicated you know especially if somebody's talking about you know um, making a change on another person, uh, or if they're talking about making a change that's terrible, or making a change that um, might, you know, people get uh, weird about somebody making a change that might give them an advantage in some way, and I can see that if you're like, I'm going to genetically modify my endurance and then go compete in endurance sports, you know, is that cheating? Most people win at world-class levels because they have amazing genes and they worked really hard. What if you weren't born with amazing genes, but you gave yourself amazing genes and then worked really hard? I mean, is it, should we always just reward luck? Well, okay, so, um, just to, um, how do you see the world in the future? <laughs> so, I definitely think that biology in the future will change the way we do manufacturing. Um, I definitely think biology will be the key to unlocking, you know, colonizing other planets and things like that. I think it's interesting that we decided it would be easier to change planets than people. <laughs> we, we decided it would be easier to make planets that are inhospitable to humans be entirely different than it would be to just make humans adapted to those planets. And I do think, fundamentally, humans are just not space worthy. Um, and so I think ever like really living long term in other planets is going to take some genetic modification. So I do see that being a big part of that in the future. Um, but I also see a lot of really interesting, beautiful possibilities. Like what happens, like a seed, you put it in the ground, it grows into basically a big shape, right? It's a living shape. That can be different shapes depending on the type of seed. It can be anything like a tomato, a giant sequoia, right? And so if you can control the DNA, you can control the shape. And if you can grow a house, 
that's a really interesting world. If you can, because then like, what does a house cost when you can just plant one? You know, wait a little while. If they just grow wild, you just go be in one. I think, I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities for taking labor away from humanity and just making it happen sort of naturally. So I think it'll be really interesting to be able to grow, to manufacture things the way that we grow things. And I do think that's something that's that's coming down the pipeline eventually that I think is a really interesting possibility. Yeah, that's cool, that's a fresh idea. All right, so this is not a margarine commercial. <laughs> have some uh, directions for your hands. Okay. Okay, so put your hands. Right here. I can move my hands if you don't want a crotch shot. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I'm doing. So go ahead move your hands to your right leg. Okay. Yeah, good. Like, yeah, just right there. It's fine. Just, yeah, just like that. And then I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things with your hands. Okay. Okay. Real easy stuff. All right. So just go ahead and fold your hands. Okay. Good. All right. And then go ahead and unfold them. Very good. And then one on top of the other. Good. And then with your right hand, you don't have to lift it high. Maybe just kind of gesture or point. A little lower. Yeah, you just, I, I like how you did it with the fingers, yeah. Okay. Yeah, nobody's going to go ahead and yeah. do anything nasty to dogs. Everybody loves dogs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And then fold them again. And then no. fold them again. Good. Okay. All right. So just stay right there. And then I'll get your eyes. So you know, it's going to match that. so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The closest shot I've ever had was... Showtime was mm -hmm. They did a shot. They had this probe, mm -hmm. right? It's like this lens thing. It's like this long, you know. Mm -hmm. And they like got a shot so close that they brushed my eyelashes. Woo! Across. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. whoa, that is a close up. <laughs> that's, that's a little extreme. I wonder what the point of that was. Well, apparently, they do with all the interviews. So they mm -hmm. got like, um, you know, so they just they wanted like iris shots. Anyway, so you're looking at my hand. Okay, good. Just keep looking at my hand, don't move your mouth or anything. You can blink, you don't have to be a statue. Okay, that's good. And say that's another. Cool. Alright, so uh, let me switch over to my gimbal. So, in molecular biology, you normally rely on things like gel electrophoresis and sequencing, and everything's basically invisible. You know, most of molecular biology looks like moving tiny amounts, like really, really tiny amounts of clear liquid from one tube to another, and mixing small amounts of clear liquids. But okay, so, um, uh, it, it, does, it, does it already have a well plate in it? Uh, no. No? I mean, is there a way you can pretend to pop in a well, well plate? Uh, oh, I thought I was going to set up plates, but I can put some PCR tubes in. something, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Clear space, which is really nice, because, mm -hmm. you know, oh, jeez. See? Always. Where this is why usually Paula comes in to help me. Paula's like, it's right in front of your face. I can't even see it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to see your face. You can get you, you what? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so step back. No. Okay, so I'm just going to walk in. Yeah, you're going to walk in, grab something, and then leave. Action. And then let's do it again, only I'm gonna be close up on your hands. And action. That looked good. Okay. <laughs> um, Sodium dimoral sulfate. Sure. All right. Do you have any, um, uh, do you have any apps? Okay. Probably use as a um, sort of a quickie autoclave, you know, a couple of different centrifuges. My spectrophotometer, this one's a UV and uh, visual light spectrophotometer. Not a very obvious tool, but super handy. I think every lab should have one. It's actually a castration band uh, tool, but it's also really good for like picking up hot things because you can like pick up any shape with these things. They're actually really great. Filming you, filming me. <laughs> 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 
You have should to be I, on both should sides. Should I film the yeah. camera? Yeah, film me. It'll, just get, it'll be really meta. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. I'll film Moby filming the camera. I'll film it you. Okay. Ready? The universe is going to burst. All these layers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay, action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then let's get out of that shot. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did. <laughs> it's getting weird. Um, so then uh, I'll have a shot of you walking out of the What's that? It is important, no? No. Nah. You can move that way. That's just my speed to play listen to music. What do I do? So I'm like, uh... Can we try and repeat about this? Sure. Should I leave the mic on or should I put on the coat or something? Microphone? Yeah. Uh, I think you need to put on uh, your jacket. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Turn that around. Reasonably bright. When we stop, okay, uh, if you open the door, like open the door, okay. like uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Return. No faster. Close. Okay. And tell you can stop here and save me about your. Okay. We'll do. So I'll start from outside. One second. Yeah. So uh, this is where I store most of my camera, adding new genes to the sperm and using them to carry sperm to the DNA, but it doesn't allow me to do controlled genome editing. And that's what CRISPR really 
That's why CRISPR is sort of the next step to that. So adding this to CRISPR, which is my next step, allows me to say, okay, I want to take a gene like hyperuricemia in donations. And um, that disease causes them to build up a lot of uric acid crystals, but what it does is, uh, it, the cause of that disease is there's a single letter that's wrong in their genome. There's a G that was supposed to be a T in their genome. And with something like CRISPR, if you can deliver it to the egg cells, then CRISPR can cut right at the, the mistake and open the DNA up, and then you can supply a template uh, for the repair of that DNA, and that uh, can supply the proper sequence. And so when the cell repairs that DNA, it integrates the proper sequence. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Behind the scenes. <laughs> yep. I mean, need some of that for my. Um, yep. Yeah. I gotta find out what this. Like that's terrifying. I was like, do not trust people. Well, I mean, you'd have to gas at least ten different. Before <laughs> <laughs> you get it right. Assuming you two would be the second one you try. One, 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 one. Lois. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't be a biohacker's responsibility to deal with these problems. There's just brokenness in the system that creates those.